Good morning. Our subject this morning is our compassionate intercessor. If you're meeting someone for the first time face to face, are you nervous, hesitant, or even scared? Do you think, what sort of reception will I get? How will I be treated if I'm on unfamiliar territory? How will the person meeting me treat me, knowing my faults and failings? Will they understand that I, I, what I've gone through, all my sufferings, hurts, even my feeling of inferiority? Will, did I say nervous, hesitant, or scared even? What sort of reception will I receive? Coming to God for the first time in prayer can be like that. What sort of reception will I receive? Our scripture passage today answers that question. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as us. Then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Coming to God in prayer, not if not just for the first time, but at any time, what sort of reception will we receive? Well, firstly, sympathy. Jesus went through the full range of human emotions. Tempted, rejected, betrayed, yes, even death. Our key verse reminds us, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet without sin. As William Symington puts it in his prayer for today, Jesus meets us with genuine heartfelt compassion. And secondly, we receive grace. We've all heard the acrostic for grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. And that is what is re we receive when we come to God in prayer. In prayer, we come to the throne of grace through the shed blood of Jesus. Whatever we have done, God welcomes us, because by that act of coming we admit all our faults and failures. God's grace and Christ's sympathy add up to the confidence with which we can meet with God in prayer, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, you are the compassionate intercessor, the advocate who pleads our cause, able to enter into our feelings and to make our case your own. Your language, looks, tone and manner <coughs> melt all our doubts and hesitations. Compassion flows not merely from your divinity, but from your humanity with exquisite sensibility unaffected by the blunting influence of sin. You plead the cause of those whose miseries you once shared. For the severe of afflictions, the bitterest temptations, the most pungent sorrows, the most awful privations, you had full and frequent trial. You were not only cast into the same mould as us with respect to nature, but into the same furnace within, with respect to affliction. Although you had no knowledge of the evil of sin from personal desire, yet well you knew its weight and its bitterness, having had its guilt imputed on you and its punishment ex extracted from you. And now your exaltations has produced no change in your nature or your affections. You are the same in heaven as you were on earth, still possessing a human nature, still the God-man, Emmanuel, God with us. Human blood still flows in your veins and human sympathies still glow in your breast. 
The compassion we feel for ourselves can never equal the compassion with which you regard us, for ours is the compassion of a corrupted nature, but yours is the compassion of uncon uncontaminated humanity, indissolubly linked with all the tender mercies of deity. Our needs never pass unnoticed. We may miss the opportunity to bring our needs to God, but not so our glorious intercessor. We can rely on you with perfect confidence that when we sin, you will plead for pardon. When we are accused, you will vindicate us. When we are afflicted, you will procure our comfort. When we are tempted, you will pray that our faith will not fail. When we perform with diligence our duties, you will make them acceptable to the Father. You are no cold or selfish pleader. Your soul is in the work. Your prayers are the prayers of the heart. Love prompts all your requests, selects the best arguments and urges the strongest pleas. Our prayers are never as fervent as yours. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have the confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. Amen. <laughs>